All right, uh, we now welcome on recurring guest, actually, um, Boise State outside linebacker Brandon Hawkins. Brandon, thanks for uh, joining. Yeah, thanks for having me back. For sure. So, like we kind of talked about before, I kind of just want to get your thoughts on, or maybe not thoughts, but like perspective on how crazy this season was. Because, like, I think the first time we talked, I didn't listen to it back again, but I was kind of trying to remember like what we talked about. And I think like the season wasn't supposed to happen. I believe that's right. It was right after the season had gotten canceled and it was kind of like, what are we doing? Like, <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah. So we got canceled. We were able to get a little time off, which was nice. Cause I mean, it was a crazy summer just working out, trying to get ready. Cause we lost a bunch of time in the spring. So when we got back, we were just like working and then it was kind of like, canceled and we didn't know what to do like we just did all this stuff for what feels like nothing and we're like okay we do we get ready to play any time is there a chance we can play any time or is it in the spring and we didn't get much information at first so then um they told us it was there's kind of rumors that we were working towards it and then when it finally happened we're like oh like we got to get going right so um, it was weird. It was definitely weird at first because we're like, some people are out, some aren't. And it's like, people are coming back every day. People are leaving every day. We're getting tested all the time. So we, we had a, it was a modified fall camp. So usually fall camp will start before school starts. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're there all day. And um, we started doing this and we had, like it was during school. So we weren't able to have the same this and it was like in season hours we couldn't um go I, I think it might have been a little bit more but so we had let's say four weeks to get ready for the first game and we were getting tested three times a week and so it's like kinda the, weird. the nose one yeah dang so at first it was like the one where you have to like go all the way up and then I guess recently or like they discovered that it you could just go like in your nose so <laughs> like, oh, great. Like, like now you tell us that yeah exactly but so we we were able to do it on our own so that made it a little bit better um so and then just kind of leading we test Sundays after the games Thursdays before the games and Tuesdays before the games so just kind of testing doing all that and then uh, it was weird. Was it weird? Like, cause there was a couple positive tests, right. With players. Yeah. Like, so would they just, they just like, didn't come to practice. You guys were just like, Oh, like so-and-so is not here. So then they must've tested positive or like. So I, I actually tested positive um, Colorado state week. I okay. think that game was a Thursday. Mm -hmm. I tested on a Tuesday and I was, I'm literally like on my way to the facility on Wednesday morning and the trainer called and then they're like, you test positive. <laughs> I'm like, like <laughs> what? I, I honestly had no clue how, because during season, I'm just going to football. I go to like one or two classes just with the COVID classes and then I'd go home. So I'm not sure how exactly I got it, but so then after you test positive, it's kind of like, all right, who's who's going to be out because of you so it's yeah. like I have a roommate and that week before um I was taking so I think they go back two days before your your test or you, two, two days before you take your test so I was studying for a test like an actual school test and I was just in my room the whole time hadn't had much interaction with him and like football, you're kind of moving around it. I think they said it's within six feet and for 15 minutes. And so I wasn't, even then I wasn't around him. And that's like really the per people who get out because of other people. So he got to stay, which was kind of cool for him because yeah. um, that game, he scored a touchdown on, I think somebody blocked a punt and he, <laughs> it just fell into his hands and he that's scored a touchdown. Awesome. But yeah, I mean, it just so happened to where, 
like, because any other time, if I didn't have that test, then I would have been around him, but I didn't, I had the test, so I was studying on my own, and not really around anybody. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. Um. So the, did you guys have to, like, did you guys have to wear masks and stuff, like, when you were in the weight room and when you were watching film and stuff? Yes. So, the only time we don't have to is when, like, we're running, but we're also spread out more. Gotcha. Because that's where you can keep and like a, there's something about the air circulating outside versus being inside. So yeah. we we had to wear them in meetings and weight room. And then, OK, so this I don't know really like what I'm trying to ask here, but I just think like cause did you have to wear them on the sidelines? We did not. You did not. OK, because like whenever I see like the NBA or like, you know, or like, yeah, I, I just think it's stupid because I'm like. You, you obviously tested negative because you are playing in the game. Right. I know. It's – I, like, see people and they just put a mask on. And it's – I don't – Especially when they're yelling and then they, like – like, they have it off to yell and then they put it back on. I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? It just doesn't – I don't – I mean, sometimes you have to – well, we had, like – there are some places where you have to have one. It's, yeah. like, state-mandated, so – I don't think we went to California, but California is one of the places. So we like, we would sometimes wear them just around our necks during the games, just cause yeah. something, if like we're talking to somebody else other than a teammate, we'll have to pull it up or something. I don't, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Did you have any, cause I'm tr- like, you said you didn't go to California. Like, was there any games with, with fans like at all? So we had a few at uh, home games that the that's right. family and friends, and then there was like a lottery system. Um, but still, like that's like that yeah. was barely any. Right. I mean, there's. I'm trying to think. I don't. I feel like there's. No, I don't think there was many at anywhere. That's got to be so weird. Like, it's it honestly wasn't as weird as you would would have thought really because i mean you're kind of missing some of the outside noise but you still have um the music going and all this stuff from the big speakers and it's kind of like half the time you don't even notice it unless you're standing on the sideline but like once you're in you don't really notice it at all okay yeah okay that makes sense i mean it was i thought it was gonna be super weird but it was i was like surprised at how normal it felt that's good. Then, then, like the stadiums are doing a good job of like trying to keep it normal yeah. and stuff. Gotcha. Um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the new coach, um, Andy Avalos. So, did he did he recruit you? Yes. So he was the linebackers coach when I was getting recruited, and so it was kind of like between him and uh, Coach Danielson, who is now the DC. They both kind of like talked to me a lot and were recruiting me. So now Danielson is my linebackers coach, and he was um, he coached a different position at the other time. And then Avalos was my coach for I want to say like a year, year and a half maybe. And then he went to Oregon, but he was it was kind of cool. Yeah, to that's him and see him again. That's awesome. Was um like what's what's he what's he like as a coach that's different from Harson? Like, I mean, have you, I, I guess you don't really know, but like as him as a head coach necessarily, but. Yeah. I don't, I think he's still kind of finding that identity of who he wants to be as a head coach. We haven't done or haven't been able to do too much football wise. Yeah. To where I'm not, I can't really talk on that part of it. Cause I don't, I just don't know about it yet. So, but I mean, everything about him, like he's the way he just carries himself and interacts with other people. He's a super good guy and he's got everybody fired up. So I'm sure he's going to do great football wise. Yeah. And it seems like, like the coaches that he hired are a lot younger. I don't know if that's just what the, yes. what everyone's saying, but. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of think that too. Um, I mean, they seem like a bunch of them are kind of new, newer coaches and like up and coming. Um, we had a few coaches like coach Riddle, uh, the tight ends coach, he was Harson's assistant head coach. He stayed 
he's been with Harson for a while, but um, he's he might be the oldest coach on our staff. Then he stayed. That's surprising. Mm hmm. So he's super, I like him a lot. He's cool. That's awesome. So, I mean, obviously, like you had to have been shocked when Harson left. Yes. So it was kind of like one of those things where he accepted the job and then uh, it just, somebody else reported it right away that, so like we found out through Twitter and so did um, most of the other people, but it's kind of like, just, I don't know. It's, I mean, we would have liked to know him, but I kind of get it. Like he was, or it just got released. Like, it wasn't like he didn't have a chance to tell anybody. It just happened right away. Yeah, I'm assuming he, like, probably wanted to tell you guys. He just – he didn't really have control over that. Right. So. Yeah. What are you going to miss most about him? Like, what about him as a coach? Um, I'd say – The way the way he kept the culture within the program, he was longtime player, um, has been around. He's known a bunch of things, so it's kind of just the way that he kept it. And he will he kind of enforced not enforced, but like kept it going and all this. But Avalos was a um, he played here too, so. He, I'm sure he's going to do a great right. job with the two. Yeah. That's what surprised me most about Harson leaving is because he had been here for so long mm -hmm. and he like, yeah, he played here. It just seemed like this was like, I didn't, yeah, I was shocked, but yeah. I mean, good for him. Auburn's got to be a, a bucket list job. I'm assuming as a coach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's big time down there. Yeah, for sure. It's crazy. Yeah. Lots um, of money too. Yeah, definitely. That probably played a little bit of a factor. Um, I wanted to just ask a little bit about the the BYU game because that was, I mean, obviously it sucked the outcome, but the hype around like that was a pretty big deal just because we had lost them the year before and they were pretty highly ranked, right? When when they came mm -hmm. here, um, yeah. Like, how – were they, like, one of the best teams you've ever played? Like, how good actually were they? I mean, from special teams to offense and defense, they were just all around, like, they were good. Like, it's one of those teams you watch and you're like, oh, gosh. Like, yeah. They're legit. And I'm honestly surprised that they lost to Coastal Carolina because I, – I don't know, but BYU was good. Yeah, for they sure. Just, physical and fast and all around is um okay so zach wilson too like because he's he went from pretty much being a no one not a no one like mm -hmm. if you watch college football before this year you probably knew who he was but i mean now he's like projected to go like number two like is he right. do you think he's that good so funny thing about him is he came he committed here right oh, after really? i did and he was on we went on our official visit here together and so i'm not sure so i kind of like knew him and knew about him and all this and um i'm not sure why he ended up decommitting from here i think byu is really close to his home but um yeah, so I kind of knew him beforehand and thought, like, the way that our coaches had talked about him when they were recruiting him, they kind of talked big about him. So I've always had, like, I'm like, okay, this kid is good. And then he ended up starting his freshman year. And so I think he, he might have beat somebody out. I'm not completely sure. But um, his sophomore year, I think, yeah, he, he could just kind of had some stuff happening. Like he had a surgery or something. Right, right. That's why he missed our game and something else going on. And so it was kind of like I, – I felt like it was always just time with him. Like at some point he was just going to be really good because I was like just watching his high school film and like talking to our coaches when they were recruiting him. And 
Yeah. And when so, you guys like, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say like, so it seems like he came out of nowhere, but to me, it kind of felt like he was always, which was kind of fun, weird. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Was it like when you guys were preparing for him, was it, Cause I mean, what, like he's got a, he's got a big arm. Like what were the other kind of like scouting reports on him? I mean, he can run. Um, he likes to run on his terms. Usually it's not like, Oh, I'm going to zone. Like if it's an option play, then he'll keep it. Cause it, it's kind of like he wants to, but he's not like a run first type of guy. He can, but he move he can move well to keep staying in the pocket or get out of the pocket and be able to throw and he just I don't know those his receivers too I think there's some stat we heard about him that was just a ridiculous number that they had like five drops oh wow <laughs> or something I don't they caught everything yeah like it was any ball that was like in their radius they caught whether it was one-handed over somebody else's back and he just got the ball like he was able to get the ball to him mm-hmm. he's he's got a good arm too so okay, and like, how well do you you follow like college football nationally? Um, so I don't get a chance to watch games. The right, games I right. usually get to watch are um, Saturday mornings. We'll wake up and we'll watch like college game day, and then the earlier games. And then if we have a break, if we usually play a later game, we'll watch some or like the night before. So I'll watch them every now and then and just kind of like look at the scores of the teams that I know. Right. But it's just kind of like I mainly follow other kids that I know that play. Yeah. Because like, okay, so we we do a lot of like, like we rank, we like to rank guys like on our podcast and stuff. And mm-hmm. I think obviously like Trevor Lawrence is going to go number one. Um. But, like, we've had a couple, like, people ask us, like, where we would rank the other quarterbacks in the draft. Like, Zach Wilson, obviously, Justin Fields, um, Trey Lance, Mac Jones. Like, I, I'm i curious to hear, like, it, you don't have to, but I'm curious to hear, like, where do you think you'd rank those guys? So, I think Trevor Lawrence is head and shoulders over everybody else and there's a huge drop off did you see some of the throws that he had like his pro day yeah. today that he was unbelievable uh, yeah he's ridiculous and he's i remember watching his high school highlights he's rolling out to his not or he's rolling out one way to, i think it was his non-throwing arm and just slinged it to the other side of the field perfect i'm like oh my god <laughs> but i think he's head and shoulders over everybody else um I think Fields is good, but I think overall as a quarterback and like throws and reads that Zach is better than him. Gotcha. Um, and then I don't know who's, who's the, is it uh, North Dakota state? Yeah. yeah. Um, Trey Lance. Yeah. I don't know anything about him, but yeah, I think, Fields might be next. Fields might be three, but the I mean those last three, yeah, I think he he's probably going to go ahead of the other two. Yeah, I'm not but, a big um. I don't know if you got to watch Alabama play at all. I'm assuming you probably like the championship and stuff, but I'm not a big um, Mac Jones guy. Like I'm not a big um, I'm not a big Tua guy either. Yeah. Like I don't know. I don't know if this is. This is my, 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 my theory is like their receivers at Alabama are so good yeah. that Mac Jones and even when, even when Tua was there, like the throws that they made were just like slants. And then there's receivers were just like insane that they just get yeah. to the house. I, I kind of feel the same way about that. Um, but I don't know. I, I didn't watch too much, but I like just kind of like looking at some stuff and I, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, next year, we you guys have you have UCF, I think BYU again, and Oklahoma State all next year. Mm-hmm. I think there's one other out of conference. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure who it is. If I'm not sure, there's probably one more. UTSA. More. UTSA. Yeah. Is that kind of okay, yeah. close to you? UTSA. Was it UTSA or is it? Uh, it's not super close. Okay. But 
Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I know where I I know my Texas geography a little bit. Like, <laughs> I think it's I think it's UTSA. It might be. Um, oh gosh, UTEP. Yes, it might be UTEP. Yeah, I, it's one of those two. Um, but yeah, we go. We start the year off going to UCF, which will be cool. It'll be yeah. hot. Yeah, for sure. Humid, uh, and then having Oklahoma come, Oklahoma State come, will be really cool. Are those fun to play those like big non like non conference games? Yeah, they are. Like um, Florida State two years ago was really cool. Yeah, I it's bet. just because it's it's like those teams that you see growing up, and you're like, oh, that's that's cool, and then now you're playing them, and they're coming to your stadium. For sure. For sure. You um, do you think there'll be you think there'll be fans in the stands by then? I hope. I I'm sure, know. like Florida, UCF probably has a better chance than I think anywhere well, else. Florida, yeah, I think they were allowing people some last season. Yeah. So I'm hoping by next year that I don't know. I don't know, like what's going to determine if they're going to start letting people or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I don't. What needs to change? Yeah. No, for yeah. sure. It seems like, yeah, I, that's, nah, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I guess you could just, everyone just says the vaccine, but I feel like people just say it because that sounds like it's the right. answer to everything, but I don't it's know. Like, like, some people are going to get it, but some aren't. So it's like, it is, is it a certain number of people that get it or a certain percentage? I don't, I mean, these are questions for. <laughs> this is not, else, not the but, questions we need to be asking. No. <laughs> Um, did you get to watch the Super Bowl at all? I did. Who are you rooting for? Uh, I didn't really have a team in it. Yeah. Um, but I kind of had a feeling that Tom Brady would do it again. I'm really surprised how just the way the game went. Because I thought I thought it was going to be different. but I was one of uh, the only people that I knew that picked the Bucks. Because really? everyone was just on the Chiefs just because of Mahomes. Mm -hmm. but and then he was i think one or two of their tackles oh tackles was i think out. both of them yeah yeah and that hurt him i think that yeah for sure like proved <clears throat> how valuable the offensive line yeah is in football yeah. it's crazy you got a dude rushing with seven fingers getting after him every play <laughs> do you see um do you see what leonard fournette yes that's, that's <laughs> that's hilarious. So funny. Uh, i love that their whole parade is that was cool just to that see. That was awesome. Yeah, see Brady messing around a little bit. You kind of got to see a different side of him. So we have a guy on our team. Uh, his name is Matt Griffin. He's a uh, receiver from California. His brother is, I think, like the third string quarterback. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. He was the one that was holding up Tom Brady. When, <laughs> no way. Time. So it's kind of funny. That's awesome. He was probably going crazy. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Does he? Uh, does he like? Does his brother know Tom Brady like well? I think. I think they've kind of gotten closer over the year. Yeah, I'm not too sure, but they're. I know, like being in the same room and all that. For sure, that's got to be crazy. I, it amazes me how they were able to come together in an off season like uh, this. I remember, like when they first started the season, they weren't doing too great. I'm like. Oh, like I guess this is nothing, and then I look it back later, and it's like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's actually I mean, happening. Well, just the fact that they had no like he comes in here, brand new, like brand new mm -hmm. team after playing on the same team for twenty years. Yeah, like I'm I'm twenty years old. I can't even imagine. Yeah, like my whole life doing something, and then switching it and having no time to, like they didn't have any in person workouts the whole off season, and then they just. It worked. They right. clicked, and I don't know. It's crazy. For sure. For sure. Is it going to be weird next year? Because I, I mean, how many guys are leaving for the for the draft? Like, it's only a couple, right? So we have a few guys that just are kind of are just done playing. That are like seniors. Then, yeah, and then um, I know like John Bates, Avery. Um, I'm not too sure who else is. Is that it? Yeah, I think there might be. 
So then they're just so they're trying, and then some other people are just kind of bodies worn out, right? Tired, but that we have, we'll say like maybe around nine, nine of the seniors coming back. That's gonna be awesome. That's really cool that they, mm-hmm. um, you guys all get an extra year of eligibility, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. almost like the season just didn't count. Just didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So you'll be a, will you still be a redshirt sophomore? So I'm not sure if they're going to classify me as a redshirt sophomore again, or if like it's that decision you make after your senior year. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I I might be like a redshirt junior on the, on the roster, but I still have that option of the extra year. Do you think you'll take it? I'm thinking so. Unless something just happens, I mean, you never know what's going to happen with your body. For sure. So, yeah, we'll see. I don't think so. What classes are you taking this semester? So I'm taking uh, two of the upper level accounting, my That's last right. two That's accounting right. classes, and then I'm taking like anthropology, introduction to archaeology or something. I oh, I science. took that last year. I'm not even kidding. Really? Is the it, professor, um, does he have like long white hair? Yes, he's got a ponytail back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's a homie. Yeah, so I'm in that right now. And then um, like biz stat 208. And... Oh, that – I have so biz stat was – I had – I was like failing that class mm-hmm. last year for like the longest time. And then on the final – like the we had like a final project and a final – and I like aced both of them and got my grade and, and I got it up to like a C, C, C plus or something, but you can change it to like a pass, you know? Uh-huh. And so I was, I was like dangerously close to failing it. And then I got a 4.0 for the semester because of the awesome. like, change. That was a tough class. I, I did not like it. Yeah. It's, it's been a lot so far, but that I have that. And then I'm taking um, econ 317. Okay. I think it's international trade, uh, but then I just have one more class in the summer. I'm supposed to graduate. Oh, nice! Congrats, man. Thank you. That's awesome. Then you're just playing football. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna try to get my master's. Yeah, you are, my man. That's yeah. awesome. In uh, accounting, or just like mm-hmm. okay, nice. Accounting. Nice. You think you'll you think you'll stay here, or you you want to go back home when you're when you're done? I think in the long run, I want to go back home, but like I would want to stay here for a few years after. Yeah, I kind of feel that. I I don't. I feel like if you if I go to school here, and then right when you graduate, go back home, then it's almost like mm-hmm. you didn't like because the getting away for college is like you know like growing up that's an experience, right. and then like if you go back home, then it's like all right, yeah, I tried it, now I just want to like go back home. Same right. thing. Like I'm not done with my time here. Right. I still need some more time and explore some stuff i don't yeah yeah for sure for sure all right man this is awesome i appreciate it yeah thank you yeah definitely we'll uh maybe talk before the the season ends or something or before the season starts sounds good all right sweet